Shadowing. Welcome back to the Daughter Phantom Isle. In this video, we've just got the first vision of World 6 because this world is long. Thankfully, it's a level with enough interesting stuff in it to talk about a lot of things. At least of which is this electrified floor. World 6 kind of forms the final exam of this game. We've seen these bouncy moving balls in previous worlds, but they never really created much of a purpose other than stuff for us to jump over. But in this world, they're actually necessary to cross these electrified floors. And you have a lot of quick snatches, quick jumps. This is the world that really starts to test your your platforming skills, your shooting skills. I feel like it's the world where the game really... the game has already stopped messing around, but this is the first level that's really hard. Like other levels have been tricky and tough, but this world is just straight up hard. However, it does compensate for that by having most of the most of the Moon Kingdom guards that we're finding there. They're in fairly obvious locations, places you'd be anyway. But the main gimmick of this level is that it's a maze, and mazes in video games never go wrong. The basic idea is these coloured statues are all over the place, blocking doorways, mostly blocking doorways. Each one has its own little coloured gemstone, which when shot will disintegrate all of that colour statue, allowing us access to new parts of the level. It's kind of like the old collection side quest we saw in the last video, except with much longer paths. And it's not it's not always clearly signposted where you have to go next. There's a lot there's a lot of exploration, a lot of trial and error in this world. It's not so bad early on in this in this stage of the level, because we haven't got many paths open, so when we bust a statue, it becomes fairly obvious where we're supposed to go next. But as you'll see, as we bust more of the statues, we'll start to have more potential routes, and it becomes a lot more easy, a lot easier to get lost in this level. There's also a lot of the old enemies that we've seen them before, and now they start appearing in greater and greater numbers. A good thing to remember when you're doing this level is to always, when there's a clock right next to a gemstone like that, shoot the gemstone before the clock because the clock saves the state of the level. This counts for, you will have seen throughout the, L, throughout the LP, you will have seen me having to pit, having to re-grab, having to re-save creatures because I died. It's 
not essential, but it saves you some busy work. And this is probably the hardest sequence in the game. Like I mentioned in the update post, I lost... On my first recording, which I had to scrap, I lost about seven or eight lives going through here. And I think I lost another... I think I lost another two or three in this recording. And a lot of them down to that... That little platform there. I don't think there's enough... I think there is just enough room to make the grab. As you can see there. And there's just enough room if you, if you jump. Just enough room to make the jump work. If you want to just slam dunk the guy down. But then you're at risk from splash damage at the explosion, stun locking you off. And that was a real problem with all the times I died in this level. The fact that these guys and their explosions will just stun lock you straight off a platform. Thankfully they're blowing up huge crowds of them is a lot of fun. Also lots of fun blowing up huge groups of enemies with a bomb. And getting slightly turned around. Like I said, the level's easy to get turned around in. section off to the side there that looks from the small glimpse I caught of it during various lost lives coming through here. It looked to have some platforms and it looked to be an area you could get to but I never I can never figure out a way to get there. And since we're getting and since we'll get all six of the Moon Kingdom guards in this run there's nothing of extreme value over there clearly which does lead me to wonder somewhat what its purpose is and yeah, now the only statue we need to get is the yellow statue and that leaves me forgetting something that you probably will forget the fact that you've been through all the doors except the green statue door Lovely music in this world. Very chill. So yes, through the green statue door. A few health refills. And moving on to an area which the frame rate hates. It doesn't matter what I did, I could not get the frame rate to behave itself in this area. Recordings I had to scrap, they were much worse in this area, but thankfully it eventually decided to behave itself. This is an evil little section because these platforms will disappear about a half second after you step on them. So it's really a challenge of precision platforming. Because you can't there's very little scope for you to go back. And the same with that shot very small window of opportunity to hit that shot. And then suddenly, enemies everywhere. It really is kind of remarkable because the game doesn't really do that kind of giant enemy ambush that often. 
those yellow platforms are fundamentally the same as the blue ones, only they disappear. They take slightly longer to disappear because they're bigger. I also love this little sparkle effect that you get when running along these little platforms. Kind of just to ram home the idea that you're in another world. If you're here, up these little steps here, because we cleared with the, those. Punch the clock, and more precision platforming. There's no instant death if you fail that, but it is a fall down and it is something of a climb up. Don't we punch that that stone there? And that's the vision complete. So while Klonoa takes the elevator up, I'll see you next time. <laughs>